I make it come alive, do you understand? Here you can place a small table. This is a cherry orchard. In the background you see a curtain which I can illuminate and put some cherry tree shadows on, using a projector. I can do whatever I want. The theater has its good and bad sides. No matter how much a performance succeeds or fails, it disappears. It cannot be preserved forever. Nowadays, many of my performances that succeeded or failed no longer exist. When a performance ends, it's over, it is gone. It's like a relationship, breakup, when everything ends. It does not belong to you anymore. It becomes history. It can remain a part of history or just disappear. Because of my long-term work in the theater, I know very well how to work with textures, large shapes, paintings, etc. All this proved to be very useful. When you are producing a graphic work or painting, a single line can change the whole concept. The same can be done through color combination or texture. It is impossible to talk about modern Georgian theater and its development without mentioning Gogi Alex Meskashvili. It can even be called Gogi Alex Meskashvili's theater. It unites the unique, authentic universe that travels from the theater to other fields of art. Gogi Alexi Meskish really not only continues the traditions of Georgian avant-garde artists, but also creates and introduces a new, very special and unique visual language to Georgian art. This is very important since the path of avant-garde development was discontinued during the fight against formalism. His name is associated with the development of a new level of Georgian theatre. This is not only continuation of traditions, but the introduction of a new innovative quest, which even nowadays determines the tradition of Georgian theatre. Alex Meskishvili's scenography is never only limited to the production of decorations. He not only creates the stage design, but also the concept where actors become an equal component of the performance. Each of the elements operates on the stage like a live character, offering the audience an unforgettable experience. I have met a lot of interesting people throughout my life, and these encounters enriched me with numerous experiences. In this respect, I have been very lucky. Theatre has helped me a lot in my life. However, it also took up a lot of my time. One can get ideas from anywhere. They do not necessarily originate from books. For example, I am looking at that reflection now and can develop an idea. You never know when and where ideas emerge. You need to stay focused. You are thinking about it all the time, and suddenly a door opens that lets in the light. There is no logic to it. If there was some logic to follow, it would make the whole process boring. The whole process is a different kind of logic, an illogical logic. This is the nose. It was staged by the famous opera director Francesca Zambello, based on Shostakovich's early opera. This is Berlioz's Benvenuto Cellini. These figures on the sketches were five meters tall. They were made in the form of walking masks.
These are sketches of Sturo's performance, Comedy of Mistakes, that he staged at the National Theatre of Finland. The materials you see here are taken from the real costumes. It was very colorful, conditional performance with simple decorations. This is from the Metropolitan Opera, Prokofiev's opera. It united different characters. This character was played by the late, great Russian singer Elena Obrasova. She personated the Countess. I believe it shows my individuality and taste. It is not important to me if people like it or not, as one can't make oneself likable to everyone. The sculptures I make have no subject. This is just an element which is not connected to anything, neither narrative, nor shape. When it gets dry, I bend it and leave it in a shape I like. It doesn't mean anything to me, though it triggers certain emotions. This is a free shape created with the use of different components, such as a plastic bag, wooden discs, beads, and old nails, anything I found. I am also interested in combining round and pointed forms, the relationship between smooth and rough surfaces. You never know where an idea comes from. For example, the idea of Rosebug struck me when watching the last scene of the film, when the protagonist lies down holding the ball and says the word Rosebud. This was the moment when I decided to make a series with toys and colors that resembled childhood memories. The other figures are linked to the tragedy that occurred in Georgia, though they don't depict it directly. When the opera workshops were demolished, this was the topic Serga Kobuladze, Vrsaladze, Kokai Ginatov, and the other artists presented in their works. The canvas covered the whole area, while the colors dripped through it. This is how the texture developed itself. I have worked on several films, but I could not spend much time on set. One of the films I worked on was Peola, with the participation of Hvichia. My friend Badur Tsuladze asked me to produce the design. Filming took place in Batumi, where we spent a fantastic summer. Ipolite Hvichia was an amazing person. I later worked on Parajanov's Ashik Karib. I was good friends with Sergo, who sometimes came to my workshop and chose different objects for his works. He asked me to work on his film as a painter, so I asked him, why do you need a painter? But he insisted, saying that he needed inspiration. He asked me to make a collage, and I produced up to 40 pieces. He framed them and used them while shooting.
The Dream series is a very interesting work where surreal fragments are shown through synthesis of documentary materials and abstract elements. The work manifests an existential dimension, personal emotions, and an artistic quest. This and the other series, which are unrelated to his scenographic work, make a statement about the artist's creative vision. The body is created spontaneously, without any planning, and over the years accumulates different versions of experimental works. They show diverse passions and capacities of the body on abstract, multi-layer, textured backgrounds. This is our design school, which is located at the Rustaveli Theater, and where students are mainly taught free thinking. They also get familiar with the technical aspects of working in theater. These are different universes, and it is very important to study them. In our field, and in arts in general, a person needs to be well educated. Art is created by free-thinking people. Last year, during the World Quadrennial, an event as important as the Venice Biennale, we were awarded a prize. It was an amazing project about Abkhazia. It was realized based on Keti Shavgulidze's idea. The interactive installation turned out to be a very interesting work. I think art means entertaining yourself. Usually when I start working, I don't know what the result will be. I may have an idea in my head, or may not have it at all. I don't know what the final outcome will be. When you are alone and start thinking and working, you get inspired and give your inspiration form. Being contented is a deadly feeling. Sometimes the artist likes what he does. This is what can destroy you, because then you stand still. What made you so crazy about your work? There should always be something that did not work out the way you want it. I think all great artists have the same feeling. Therefore, I never let myself feel that I have done something great. Because when I finish the work, it starts to live a life of its own, and I'm no longer concerned with it. A spring always finds its way through the rocks. The same happens with art as well. 